Tesla just released some massive new updates packed with 10 amazing hidden features that are totally gonna change the way you use your Tesla every single day. From new button customizations, more streaming media sources, new games, even a whole secret submenu that lets you unlock dozens of hidden features built into your car, your Tesla can do some amazing things that you've gotta know about and try for yourself right now. So whether you're a brand new Tesla owner who just took delivery or you've been driving Teslas for years and you think you know everything, in this video I'm breaking down the top 10 hidden features in your Tesla you need to know about. Tesla has released a lot of big updates over the last couple of weeks and they've added a lot of features that you know about and many you don't know about. So let me show off some that you need to know about and try for yourself right now. And also I'm doing a giveaway if you wanna learn how you can win $25 of free Amazon money. Stay tuned until the end of the video and I'll give you the details on that giveaway. But until then, let's jump into the hidden features that you've got to know about right now. And a big thanks to JSOX for sponsoring this video. So the first hidden feature I'm gonna show you is gonna be helpful for seeing any other hidden feature I show in this video. It's a new one here and it's really helpful whether you are a brand new Tesla owner or you have been driving them for years. And that is the ability to search for any single menu item well, within all the settings and menus. So if I come down here, tap my car icon, there's a new button here called search that if I tap on that, I can type in anything and it's gonna show me where to go. So you may have heard of uh, Joe mode, for example, that lowers some of the sounds in the back. That's where you'd find that. There's some hidden features in here as well that seem to be under just the weirdest uh, places in the settings, um, like honk to capture, for example, I can type that, it's gonna show me where that is, or the blind spot cameras, if I type blind spot, it's gonna show me those. It's little things like this that you'd have to find buried in menu, under menu, being able to just do a simple search is really nice, and I'll actually also show you, by the way, uh, where it is. So see where it says automatic blind spot, then it says autopilot? Not only should that take me to the actual autopilot settings, but it also says, hey, if you're wondering where this is, by the way, it's under autopilot or uh, Joe mode, for example, if I go back and type in Joe, that'll show me that that's gonna be under safety, which is a weird one. Why would a sound uh, setting be under safety? It's little things like that that are weird. Uh, being able to search those, super, super helpful. You can search everything on the car. Uh, search function there is really nice. All right, with that out of the way, let's get to some of the juicy stuff. This one is a very advanced feature that I've gotta caution you that you should not mess around with unless you know what you're doing, and that is service mode in your Tesla. I'm seeing this pop up a lot more on YouTube these days and Twitter threads. People are getting into the nitty gritty details of their car. If you want to look and see uh, what that is and how it works, let me show you. So this is something you're probably not going to find in the search. If I type in service, it's not going to pop up. If I could spell it right, that'd be helpful. Not going to pop up because this is what Tesla doesn't want you to access. So just keep that in mind. What you're going to want to do is go down to uh, the software tab and then see where it says right here, model Y, dual range, uh, long range dual motor. That's my particular car. Tap and hold on where it says model Y or whatever the uh, different uh, part, or I should say rather the name of your car is. And then if when you let go, you're gonna be given this enter access code field. And what you wanna type in here is service. So just type S-E-R-V-I-S-E, -S -E, hit enter. You're gonna be prompted to say, hey, you know, service mode is only for service personnel. Don't mess with anything, you know, caution, this could really mess things up. Are you sure you wanna do that? Hit enable. And then you're gonna be dropped into this all new you know, otherwise unaccessible service menu, that's gonna give you a whole lot of details on your car. And of course it's gonna limit some things, it's gonna turn climate control off, all that stuff. But now you've got access to a ton of info on your car. And I'm not gonna go into every single thing in this menu, maybe in another video. If you guys wanna see that, let me know down below if you wanna do a deeper dive into service mode. But I can reinstall software here. I can look uh, at different settings. I can know more about my car, the odometer. Uh, many people these days wanna know more about the charging system and what the temperature is of the car and stuff like that. I can uh, see that here. I can look in uh, the CCS retrofit info if I wanted to. I can look more into the connectivity of the car. There is really a lot of very useful information here. And if you're having an issue with your car, this might be a great place to start to see how is, you know, let's test the LTE antennas. Am I having an issue? Am I not having service? Am I having issues with the modem? Obviously I would do a software update with the car before you start messing with anything in here because this can really, uh, you know, put you at risk of messing something up you don't want to mess with. Uh, but there is a lot here you could do. You could test the HVAC system. Uh, you can do uh, look at the windows 
shows and there is a whole lot of info here that you can really get into. There's some calibrations you can run as well. Obviously, I can calibrate the windows. I can do a wiper replacement. You can sort of see here what the status is. Very, very useful. Very, very interesting. But just keep in mind that if you mess uh, with the wrong thing, you're going to run into issues. So again, enter this at your own risk. Don't do anything that, um, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but if you do want to come in here, you want to learn about the car, learn about the different sensors, see what's going on, and possibly do some troubleshooting if you're having some issues and you say, hey, this camera's not working, or I'm having an issue with autopilot or full self-driving, this is a good place to start so you can learn some more information. Again, enter at your own risk. You can sort of see uh, the custom icon here that lets you know when you're in service mode. When you're done, if I tap on this, it's going to just keep launching the, me into this. But if I go back here, I should have the option to exit service mode, which I can do right here. I'm going to tap on this. It's going to make me hold exit. And that's it. I'm out of service mode. Again, some things will change in your car. Some things will be disabled when you're in service mode. So only do it in park and you're going to lose climate control and stuff like that. But if you are looking for an advanced uh, option, an advanced feature in your Tesla, that's probably the most advanced hidden menu uh, that you can access in your car. All right, now this next hidden feature is nothing new. It's long been in Tesla's playbook. In fact, it's been around since I got my car back in 2019, my very first Model 3 Standard Range Plus. But Tesla recently shared it on Twitter and people were going crazy and minds were being blown because no one knew it existed. So if you didn't know, let me show you how you can automatically share a destination from your phone directly to your car. So if you're in Google Maps, for example, on your iPhone, you see someplace you wanna go, go ahead on iOS and tap the share sheet and then share it to the Tesla app. It's gonna be a similar process on Android. Basically, when you share an address from your phone to the Tesla app, that's going to automatically automatically send it to the car. So once you get in, you sit down, it's already pre-programmed as your destination in your car's GPS system. And then you can start driving and it's gonna navigate you right away automatically. Again, this has been around for a while. It's nothing necessarily new. It is very convenient and very handy to know about. And if you didn't know, there you go. Instantly send a de uh, destination to your car, really simply just by sharing it directly to the test lab on your phone. Okay, now this next hidden feature is very special because it's here to totally upgrade your phone experience inside of your Tesla in a new way that you haven't seen before. If you're looking to elevate your phone and put it in the perfect position for ways, navigation, media playback control, plus so much more, this is the perfect solution and it's made by this video sponsor, JSOX. Their magnetic phone stand is custom made and custom designed specifically for the Tesla and is going to put your phone in the perfect place inside of your car. It's made to super easily attach right to the corner of your display so it doesn't block any area of the screen, doesn't block any of the buttons, doesn't block your AC, but it's going to give you full access to your phone and put it in like the perfect place so you can easily see it safely while you drive. And if that wasn't great enough, the JSOX magnetic phone holder has two other features that I haven't seen before in a phone holder for the Tesla that I really love. One is that it doesn't use any adhesive. There's no glue, grime, gunk, nothing to clean off. It's sort of just using some built-in friction to easily and steadily hold your phone in the perfect position. And also it's got an articulating arm that lets you position your phone exactly as you want it. Whether you want to go horizontal or vertical or have it in a specific area, you can really move and adjust the arm to get the perfect position. So it's perfect for you, for your height, for your comfort. I have never seen this before. It's really cool, super easy to adjust, and it's just really awesome to see. Inside the box is everything you're going to need for a successful install. You've got the holder itself. You've got sort of the magnetic ring attachment. You've got some instructions. And then also what's cool is that because this is utilizing magnets, your phone can easily attach and detach just by sort of putting it there and taking it off really easy with the power of magnets and MagSafe. And if your phone doesn't have magnets built in, JSOX has got you covered. They include this magnetic ring in the box, built in adhesive so you can stick it on your phone and then easily attach and detach your phone literally in like one second. Super easy. These magnets are very strong and is going to easily and effortlessly hold your phone perfectly inside of your Tesla. So if you're looking for a great phone holder for your Tesla that's going to put it in a way more useful spot, this solution from JSOX is awesome. Really easy to get up and running. I love that it doesn't use any adhesive or glue or anything. And again, that articulating arm easily lets you position your phone exactly how you want it. I love it. I know you guys are going to love it as well. So again, if you want to learn more, check it out for yourself today and pick up a JSOX magnetic phone holder for your car and for your Tesla, specifically made for your Tesla, hit the link down below to learn more and check it out for yourself today.
Moving on from that, this next feature is relatively new again. Many might not know about it. Very, very useful. And that is the ability to customize the scroll wheel buttons on your wheel to do a variety of different things. Again, this is a perfect example of a really great feature hidden in a horrible place in the, within the menu. This is, for whatever reason, under the display uh, submenu, which really doesn't make any sense because you can't see anything. But here I can set scroll wheel function. And what this is going to let me do is it says right here, if I long press on the left scroll wheel, it's going to do uh, some quick action. So I can set fan speed, I can set wiper speed, I can see a camera if I want to, steering wheel. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this built-in button. So for example, if I want to see the camera, if I long press the left scroll wheel, I'm automatically now going to see my cameras. And I can also see a different submenu here that's going to let me set this to open it, close it if I want to. If I long press that, I can open it and close it just by scrolling on the steering wheel. That's super cool. And again, I can customize this to do a ton of things. I can do dome lights, I can open the glove box, I can save a dash cam clip, which is helpful when driving, uh, adjust the fan speed, for example. So if I go here, I want to adjust the fan speed, it's at five now. Let's say I want to max it. And I want to go down. Ugh, oh, the AC. I have to shut off the AC when I film this, so this is kind of nice. Uh, it is just really cool to have this. It's Again, it's a new feature. Tesla just implemented it in the last software update or so, and it is going to make the buttons on your car way more useful. I'll also mention I get a lot of comments about uh, external buttons. You might see the button down here and the button over here. These are the sexy buttons. They're third-party um, buttons that you can get from a company called Enhance Auto. And the cool thing about this is that these are really customizable buttons that do a ton of stuff on your car. For example, I have mine over here set to automatically open the glove box when I click it. Uh, so that's like simple stuff. I have this one set up uh, for, I believe, autopilot and stuff like that. Uh, these are programmable buttons that could add, honestly, a whole additional layer of hidden features in here. I've shown this off again before. There's tons of ways you can customize it. So if you're advanced in your testing, you're looking to do even more customization, you want to eliminate autopilot nag and stuff like that. Sexy buttons are awesome. Uh, but in the meantime, if you don't want to buy anything additional, you can now program your left scroll wheel to do a bunch of cool things. Again, head in under display, go to this uh, scroll wheel function, and then you can set that to whatever you want. So everyone knows that Tesla has Tesla Theater. This is that really cool little menu that lets you watch different content on your car. Tesla sometimes adds new features here and they add new sources, but honestly, you've got what, six settings? You've got Tesla tutorials, which isn't much. It'd be nice if you had YouTube TV and you had some other options. You know, what about Macs, for example, uh, and other things. Uh, one of the best alternatives to this, and one that I've shown off and everybody loves it when I show it, is a website called A Better Theater. So if I pop open to my browser here, and I can just Google for this, it's called a better theater. So once the web browser loads, I will show you what that looks like. So I've just started typing it in and I've already got the autocomplete. This is a better theater. And basically it's a better Tesla theater that lets you watch all of this stuff in full screen. So if I tap on here where it says go full screen, it's gonna take a second and it's gonna use this really cool trick where it sort of uses YouTube to launch the site in full screen and then does a little workaround. Really cool, you'll see YouTube pop up for a second but then it's gonna pop me over to the site. Uh, this is free by the way, I think you have to register uh, a free account to get access to some more stuff. Uh, but once you do, it's all free and you can log in with your own uh, credentials. And this is going to give you access to way more things. So I've got HBO Max, which hopefully should take you to Max, YouTube TV for live TV, ESPN, Paramount Plus, for example, a Plex, uh, if you want to do that, a Better Out Planner. And then there's games and stuff in here. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, hit Max. Just let me go back here. Uh, there are games. There is other access to uh, media. As you can see here, I've got to log in with my free account, which I'm not going to do now. But again, free account, uh, you could do a, um, a full screen web browser if you want to. Just a really nice way to get better uh, media options in your car. It's nice that Tesla has Tesla Theater, but they're not always updating it with newer services as much as we would like. So if you want to have a uh, greater number of options to watch in your car as you're camping or supercharging or whatever uh, you might be doing, here's a great way to do it. Head to a bettertheater.com in your Tesla. Totally free and gives you options uh, to stream way more stuff in your car. This next feature is one that is very useful if you are away from your car for an extended period of time. I know for me, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the airport, parked my Tesla for a couple of days and just wanted to check in on it to make sure all was good. And that is the ability to see live cameras from your car from your Tesla app here on your phone. All you've got to do is just make sure Sentry Mode is on, and then also, you're going to need premium connectivity. That is the $10 a month Tesla data plan. If you don't have that, you've got to have it. But as long as you've got those two activated and turned on, here's all you've got to do. 
just head right into the Tesla app, and then as long as Sentry Mode is on, you'll see this big button here for live camera, tap on that. And then I've got basically five different options of cameras I can see, and my apologies, it's currently sitting in my pitch black garage, and these are hardware three cameras. So you can see they're not really great. Hopefully hardware four is better if you've got a newer Tesla, but I can just tap around and I can see the different angles here. Here's the left side or the driver's side. Here's the rear, here's the passenger. I've also got a really good shot of the inside of the car, and I will say this interior cabin camera, because it was made for lower light situations, is really good. So. In the unfortunate event that something was to happen and you wanted to see inside of your car, here's a great way to do it. Uh, this is not recording, and one of the uh, big downsides here with the Tesla app is there's no way to like a ring camera scrub through and see different events, so you could only see a live view, but this does let you see what's going on. I also have the ability to do a remote honk. I can flash the lights or do a random fart noise if I want to as well, as I'm also talk through it as well. Um, basically right here in the test lab, if I hold down to the microphone, I am now speaking and uh, it's going through the pedestrian awareness uh, speaker built in around the car. So if I wanted to relay a message to someone around, that's what I would do. Really simple, built right into the Tesla app. Unfortunately, you can't record and see what's going on, but you can get a live look wherever you are from wherever you are in the world. As long as you've got an internet connection and your Tesla has an internet connection, you can see what's going on anytime. This next feature is really cool and one just added over the last couple of weeks, and that is a built-in trip planner into the Tesla mobile app on your phone. Usually, before a couple of weeks ago, if you were going to a destination or on a road trip and you wanted to see where your supercharging stops were, the only way to do it officially through Tesla was to do it within the car, but now you can do it on your phone, not as robust as the one built into the car or a better route planner, which is unfortunately now owned by Rivian, um, but that's besides the point. Let me show you what you can do within the Tesla app. Uh, if you go under the location tab here, I can see where I am. Not only can I see the different superchargers around me and I can see uh, how many stalls are available at those superchargers, which is cool. And I can also swipe up here and see all the different ones around me and I can see some more info. I can see how busy they are. I can see the price. I can see um, some different amenities around them. But now if I wanna do a trip planner, I can do that as well. So let's say I wanna navigate to, I don't know, um, where's someplace cool? Yellowstone National Park. Let's say I wanted to go there. So I can type in my destination. There we go, Yellowstone National Park. And then now Tesla is going to do its trip planning, route planning magic to show me where I've got to go. So now I can see here uh, with my current uh, charge level of 82%, I'm going to stop at Baker, California. I'm going to stop at Las Vegas. Here are the various uh, stops along my route. I can see the times at those charging stops. And then I'm going to uh, arrive at 15%. One of the cool things as well is that Tesla is uh, continuing to add more features into this. And now what I can do is I can set the battery percentage of what I'm gonna leave at. So instead of being at 80, this is a road trip, I'd probably leave it 100. So I can go ahead and put 100 in to start and then see how that's going to affect the different stops on my route. Hopefully there's less stops or less time. Um, there is that. And then I can also go ahead and say, hey, instead of leaving now, I'm gonna leave tomorrow morning, Sunday, July 9th at like, I don't know, like 5 a.m. Let me see what that's gonna go do. Or I can say, hey, I'm gonna arrive, at, I wanna uh, rather arrive at this time, tell me how I, I've gotta re, sort of re-engineer it and backtrack. So let's say 5 a.m. tomorrow, and now that's going to show me um, what that would look like tomorrow at 5 a.m. Seems like a pretty uh, fun trip and maybe something I should do someday. Uh, so that is really cool. It's the built-in tr uh, trip planner. I can sort of see what those stops will look like. I can get more information about those things. I can zoom in. I can move all the way around the map. And then, of course, if I'm ready, I can send it to the, uh, to the car and be good to go. A new feature here, very useful, even just fun sort of poking around saying, hey, what would it be like if I wanted to go here or there? Unfortunately, you can't like drop a pin. You've got to have a destination in mind. Like I just can't tap on this and say, hey, take me to Chicago. Chicago, um, but it is super cool to see this and uh, all the cool things uh, you can do from right within the Tesla app while you're sitting on the comfort of your own couch and just uh, wanting to get this info. This feature here is one of my favorites and every time I show it off, people absolutely love it. So let me show you a little hidden feature here that Tesla doesn't show you anywhere. And that is an extra way to get uh, a different, or I should say an extra icon in the row here. So you see how you have the four icons here, unlock windows and uh, lights and stuff like that. I can obviously tap and hold here and I can rearrange that to what I want. If I wanna swap out vent for uh, the AC off or honk or whatever, I can do that. But there's also a way to actually get one extra icon in there, but you've gotta know what to do. You've gotta basically drag it to the very edge of this bar here, the very rightmost corner, and that's gonna put it in here. So if I wanted to say, for example, um, I want to do the uh, sentry mode uh, control. I'm gonna grab sentry mode here. Obviously I can swap it out with one of these, but if I drag it all the way to the right, which takes a little bit of, sometimes it takes a different finger position, try your thumb, all the way to the right, 
right in the corner and let go. That's going to drop now five icons on there. Again, let me try it again because it's tough. Uh, you've got to use the right finger and have enough space to get to the very edge of your screen. Let's say for the a fart, for example, grab that, drag it all the way to the corner until you sort of see the gray uh, light up at the end again. See, it's not working there. So let me try my thumb all the way to the edge until you see sort of the gray uh, sort of highlight that's going off. See right there? Drop that. Bam. And there you go. Five icons. Uh, if you know how to do it, little trick here on your Tesla. Uh, gives you a little bit more control with the tap of a finger. I'm gonna be really quick with this next hidden feature. It's one of my favorite Tesla features ever. It's the automatic blind spot camera. If you don't have this turned on, turn it on now. It's a game changer. Go under settings, go to uh, autopilot. If I can find it, it's gonna be right there. Then you wanna turn on the automatic blind spot cameras with this one here. And here's a couple of cool things. One is that when I turn this on, now I've got a really cool preview of the left side, or the right side, but also if you didn't know, you can move this around. So just tap and hold on this. I can move it to three positions. I can throw it up here if I'd rather have it more uh, closer to the center of the screen. I could have it back here or I can have it down here. I think by default it uh, goes right there, which is not, in my opinion, the most useful. So really easy to swap that. Just take your hand, uh, hold down and put it where you want. Best feature, love that feature, super easy. Turn that on in settings. And once you make your turn, it's gonna automatically turn off. Now, the next hidden feature here I've got to talk about is Tesla's referral program. And hold on a second before you blast me in the comments. The reason I'm talking about this is because it is a lot more lucrative and a lot more worthwhile than it ever has been before. And Tesla has just made some major changes that are going to change how you use the credits you get. So if you haven't heard the news, if you are the person receiving the Tesla you're taking delivery and you go through a special referral link like the one I've got down below in the description, you're going to get up to $500 to $1,000 off your car, $500 for a 3 or Y, $1,000 for an S or an X, and then 90 days of full self-driving totally for free. So you can do the FSD beta, enjoy all the FSD features, 90 days for free. And for the person actually doing the refer, the person giving the referral link, you're going to receive uh, either 10,000 or 20,000 credits, depending on the model. Obviously, a uh, higher credit limits for the S and the X, uh, lower for the three and the Y, but uh, that now means that if you make a couple of referrals, you can do some cool things with that. To access Tesla's referral program and to see where your link is, go ahead and tap on the little loop box, little square up here in the top right. I can see my referral rewards. You can get uh, referral rewards for referring a Tesla or solar. And then you can see some of the awards. Tesla's gonna push you to do supercharging miles. You can do uh, the glass. You can do a uh, Cybertruck raffle, stuff like that. And then also you can see here FSD. If I tap here on all of the featured stuff, I can go through here and see all the things you can redeem. And again, you're gonna get 10,000 at a minimum for doing a three or a Y and 20,000 for an S or an X. So at the minimum here, uh, if you make one refer, refer one referral you can do three months of full self-driving you can enter in a bunch for the Cybertruck raffle there's some different merch that you can go ahead and apply for which is pretty reasonably priced i mean 500 bucks or 500 credits rather for a shirt so you get a bunch of swag uh and then there are some upgrades you can do as well to your car uh, you can do uh, eight thousand for eap ten thousand fsd i can do an acceleration boost for about ten thousand if i want to uh roof rack stuff like that um and even a wall connector for 5500 which is pretty good uh so tesla has made some changes that make this way more worthwhile while. So if you want to actually, let me show you, if you want your link, that I believe is going to be, let me go back here. That's going to be right where it says refer now. I'm going to bring, if I tap on this, it's going to bring up all my contacts, which I don't want to do, but it also give you your link that you can share. So tap on that refer button. And again, you have a lot more, um, you know, different things to spend it on that are way more worthwhile. So if you are in the business of trying to make some referrals, definitely do that. If you are going to order a Tesla and you'd like to use my referral code, you can hit the link down below. You're of course going to get uh, some freebies. I'll get some stuff. So it's a win-win for everybody. You even get a discount off the car, which is kind of cool. Uh, but referral program just got way better. So definitely make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it already. Also, speaking of turn signals, Tesla recently took one of their exclusive features of the Model S and Model X and brought that down uh, to the uh, Model 3 and Model Y, and that is automatic turn signals. So when you go to make a turn, like let's say I'm going to go merge in the left lane, when I take the car and drive over and complete that uh, merge, the car knows and it's going to automatically kill the signal for me without me having to do it manually. If you want to turn that on, it's really useful. I, I actually do like it. Uh, go under settings, go to lights. Again, another really 
weird uh, place to put it. And then there's auto turn signals, and you can see what Tesla's gonna give the explanation as to what it can do. You can pause if you wanna read that, uh, but it is super nice. And basically, whenever you merge lanes or you make a turn, it's just gonna turn the signal off for you automatically. No mess, no fuss, super easy. And again, you can turn it on or off. This hidden feature here isn't a huge deal, but it is kind of nice. And that is that uh, Tesla has now implemented a new feature where if there is no substantial weight in the passenger seat, it's not going to give you option for passenger uh, HVAC, which is kind of nice. So I can see here, uh, I can turn on the HVAC for me here. And since I'm the only one in the car, it's not gonna blow any air out of that side of the car. It's not gonna give me options here. It's not gonna waste screen real estate with uh, climate control options for the passenger, and it's not gonna waste the airflow going on, on that side of the car using more energy because there's no one in that seat. Obviously, if there was a passenger and the weight was detected, it would automatically turn that on. And also there's a new mode here, if I go down here to camera preview, that should show me all of the different cameras around my car. So, hey, there we go. Wow, that's pretty cool. Here's the behind the scenes of the interior of my car. You can see, hey, there I am. There's uh, actually, well, you're seeing from the screen, there's the interior cabin camera. I can wave up there. Here's a little behind the scenes of how these videos are made. And what's nice now is that with this new software update is I can see a preview of all of the different cameras around my car. So I've got wide, I've got main, I've got narrow. Some Now, what's interesting too is some of these car, uh, cameras you'll recognize from sentry mode and dash cam, but some of these cameras are not accessible in anything but this or directly from Tesla. So this door pillar camera, for example, usually not accessible. The fender camera is, the right door pillar camera, again, not usually accessible. Fender camera is the rear view. So now if you're having a particular issue with the camera, you just wanna see these are all the different vantage points that you can capture from your car. And again, you've got that interior cabin camera, which is a pretty good shot of everything going on in the car. For whatever reason, Tesla doesn't record this. It would be sort of nice for safety reasons to be able to see what's going on. You can also stream this from the phone, um, which I'll show in this video as well. But there you go, a little behind the scenes of the interior cabin camera and all the different cameras uh, you can see. So if you're curious, you wanna see all the different perspectives your car can capture, head to service and then go to camera preview. What are your thoughts on all this? What is your favorite Tesla feature that you like to use? What's been one of your favorite uh, features to see in latest updates that you enjoy using? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, two more things, uh, a couple of giveaways here. One is that the Chicago Chesed Fund is doing their ninth annual Tesla raffle where you could win the Tesla of your dreams, Model S, Model X, Model 3, Model Y, or Cybertruck, or if you like cash, $50,000 cash. And if you do enter, use the code Robert. That's gonna save you $25 off two tickets or $500 off 15 tickets. So use that uh, code down below, link down below if you wanna enter for that. And also I'm doing a giveaway of my own, giving away $25 of free Amazon money. Uh, all you've gotta do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, and then leave a comment on this video and then the other video I put up uh, the previous video that just went up, I'll put a link to it down below. I'll leave a comment on that. I'm doing weekly giveaways, giving away um, basically free money. I got a couple of uh, cool recipients that I've gotten to connect to over the last couple of weeks who have been very happy and have bought cool Tesla accessories for themselves. So you could win next. Just leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, like this video, keeping it simple. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.